I love a good shonen anime. I love the balls to wall action, and I love that sweet sweet serotonin rush when the hero finally mashes in the face of their series long nemesis. So, with COVID-19 forcing everyone into lockdown, I figured sinking my teeth into a shonen series would be the perfect distraction from my crippling anxiety and growing loneliness. And it was in this search for something to watch that I came across Devilman Crybaby. Having seen the trailer with no prior knowledge of the show, I was under the impression that Devilman Crybaby was a shonen anime. The main character goes around slaying demons and getting mad hoes. Seemed like my kind of show. Sure, it looked a little darker than your regular shonen, but I'm a spicy boy and I like my anime a little spicy. Unfortunately, I had no idea I was about to consume the anime equivalent of a fucking Carolina Reaper. I mean, I was definitely expecting some dark stuff, but as with all shonens, I expected the ending to ultimately be the triumph of good over evil. So, when things don't go exactly as I expected, I was left reeling like a crackhead in withdrawal, and wondering, why? Why did the series end in the way that it did, and why would it not give its audience the ending that we all so desperately wanted? Devilman Crybaby left me dead on the inside, but at the same time craving for more. I couldn't figure out why, despite how empty I felt after watching the series, I wanted to experience it all over again. Maybe it was the chaotically dark and beautiful visuals that got me, or the exhilarating retro synth laden OST. But animes with great visuals and audio to match are a dime a dozen these days, and most of them don't leave me feeling any kind of way. No, there was something more to Devilman. Something intrinsic. A quick glance at the most prominent action shonen in recent years reveals a pretty clear trend in plot. The hero with an underdog's tale defeats one villain after the next, before finally coming face to face with the one big bad guy that's been hyped up the entire series. And sure, in their final battle, the hero might be knocked down a few times, but he gets back up and eventually curb stomps the living shit out of the final villain. Having seen Devil Man Crybaby, I can definitely say that it's not your typical shonen, or if it even classifies as a shonen at all. However, it does start off following the typical shonen formula. The main character, Akira, goes from slaying one demon to the next, before confronting Satan himself. Now, unless you fall in the minority of people who've seen the 1972 original, or whatever this abomination is meant to be. Nara, It's here, in this final fight, that Devil Man Crybaby takes its viewers down an unexpected path. It is not Satan that is defeated and killed, but rather our hero, Akira. And with his death, so too dies the hopes of us viewers, the hope that despite all Akira had been through, the loss of his family and his love interest, and the betrayal of his closest friend, he would overcome this final foe and find peace. Whilst the utter hopelessness of this ending broke my heart, I believe it's also part of what makes both the original and Netflix's adaptation so uniquely impactful. When I initially finished the series, I was left confused as to why Umenosuke Ida, the original director of Devilman, chose to end this series on such a nihilistic note instead of concluding in a more vanilla fashion. And don't get me wrong, there are definitely dark moments in anime, but even in these shows, there is a semblance of hope and a better future on the horizon that I'm able to accept and come to terms with. Devilman, on the other hand, left a sinking feeling in my heart, and no doubt in my mind, that the hero had lost. It wasn't until some time later that I finally came to resolve this confusion that I felt. The reason why Devilman Crybaby's ending left me an empty husk of my former self is the same reason why I now consider it one of my favourite animes. The ending hurts so bad because I empathised with Akira. I wanted to see the hero win, just as I wanted to see myself overcome the obstacles in my own life. Instead, 
the show is a forceful reminder that what we think is good and what is right doesn't always prevail. And at least for me personally, forced me to reflect on the things in my life that I have tried desperately to achieve but fell short. And I guess that's why I like the series so much, because though Devilman Crybaby may not have been the generic shonen that I was looking for, the spirit of shonen, of the indomitable will of humanity that so many protagonists embody, is alive and well within the series. Akira may have lost, but he stood as a massive middle finger to the cruel and hopeless reality he was faced with right until the bitter end. And I think there's a sad, inspirational beauty in that. To set out on a pursuit doomed to fail, but to try anyway. I doubt this is the takeaway that Ida had in mind for the series, but it's the conclusion that I've reached. And sure, it's fine to think of Devilman Crybaby as nothing more than an edgy, ultra-violent, sensory trip of an anime, but at least for me, it serves as a bittersweet reminder that sometimes in real life, we don't get what we want. We don't get with that girl or guy we're interested in, that university or college we idealised, or that job we work so hard to apply for. Sometimes, as the protagonists of our own stories, we don't triumph. But that sure as hell doesn't mean we shouldn't try.